Hey folks, this is Dr. Hudgens. I have read your legislative letters um, and provided feedback to you. The feedback is going to be either in highlighted um, text on your paper or there may be little post-it notes. The, the, since we've gone to box view, which is the new inline grading tool, sometimes you'll see a little post-it note. It's like a little square. Make sure that you're looking for both places for feedback as well as the rubric that's associated with your um, with your assignment. So as I'm going along, depending on what the feedback is, will depend on where I give you that feedback. So make sure you're looking for highlights and post-it notes as well as the rubric um, for developmental feedback. This assignment is um, a pretty straightforward one. We wanted you to begin to think about something that you were passionate about, something that you were really interested in from a legislative perspective, and to get you into um, the online tools that, that guide you into knowing where um, our congressional bills are, are housed. So if this was something that was new for you, I think that's great. Um, I do want you to beginning to continue to think about the topic that you wrote your legislative letter on. If it's something that you're really passionate about, there's several other assignments in our course that lend themselves to using the same topic or the same bill. You don't have to. Um, if you realize that you wrote on a bill that you're, um, you were just getting an assignment done and maybe you're not that passionate about, it's okay to switch it up. But if you are interested in the topic that you have pursued, I want you to continue to investigate it. I'm also going to encourage you to look at both sides of the topic. Um, I think the, the topic that was most commonly written about um, from your perspective was the mandated um, staffing minimums. Um, I think four or maybe five of you wrote about policies um, or bills that were being recommended to put in minimum staffing requirements. And all of you took the stance of, this is a great idea. Um, you know, you, you looked at it from a patient safety standpoint, from a, a nurse satisfaction standpoint, from a safety standpoint. I want to remind you that for every um, policy out there that's being recommended, there's a pro and a con. And while nurses, we can look at um, the benefits, and, and there are many benefits of minimum staffing. There's also some negative um, components of minimum staffing. Um, we begin to think about is a nurse is a nurse is a nurse. Um, if, if we have a minimum standard requirement and it says that the ratios are four to one, are those four nurses all equal? Um, can we just plug and play four random nurses into a unit and say, um, as an organization, I'm honoring the ratio, but what if those four nurses are a mix of brand new graduates um, or traveler nurses or nurses that are pulled from another department? When we begin to drill everything down to just numbers and we don't begin to really think about the quality and the value of those numbers, we really aren't getting at the problem, which is quality patient care. So. Do be aware that you know we, we can very quickly look at uh, minimum staffing ratios and think, man, that's a great idea. Boy, it would solve all of our issues. We'll also create some issues. So be sure that as you move forward in any policy um, consideration that you're not just looking at your own perspective, that you're looking at the other side as objectively as possible. One of the ways you do that is you look in places that you don't normally look for information. So if you are a CNN watcher um, and, and you really enjoy that format, that commentary, that um, political, political leaning in that um, news, um, flip the channel and, and try looking at, at another uh, news outlet for a, um, a different perspective. Maybe if you read one newspaper that has a more... Um, more um, trying to figure out what the politically correct term is, um, liberal leaning perspective, maybe you should flip the paper and look at a different newspaper that maybe has a different perspective. We, um, my husband's a, an avid reader and he grew up um, reading the Washington Times, but as a newspaper boy, he always delivered the Washington Post. And for many, many years, they were um, battling newspapers that covered basically the same territory, but came at it from very different perspectives. So that's what I'm kind of getting at here is make sure you're looking at both sides and you're looking for media sources and references and citations from both sides of the argument so that you have a balanced perspective when you're coming to um, the table to engage in a discussion about a political topic. Um, from an APA standpoint, one of the challenges that I think, especially if this is your first or second course, is by now your, your eye is twitching a little bit and you're a little frustrated with why people keep telling you that you need to fix your APA or you need to go back and look at your APA book. Um, this is the APA book. 
you don't own one, um, then I want you to reconsider that decision. If you are in the nursing track and you will be doing a master's in nursing of some sort, you need to own the book, period. Um, if you're visiting in a nursing course as um, taking this as an elective that's outside your major, maybe you're not a nursing student and this is the only um, foray into APA that you're going to live in the world, um, then decide whether you want to own the book or not. Um, if you choose not to own the book, be sure that you're using appropriate resources. Uh, the Owl Purdue website's a great source. It provides um, sample papers. It provides lots of information. Um, it's not as good as the book, but it's an easier source. Whichever one you want to use is entirely up to you, but use a reliable source. I would encourage you not to just google.com when you're looking for formatting because there's lots of variations out there that are not correct AP formatting. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using a reliable source. The, the, the APA manual is the first source. I would say that the Al Purdue site is probably the second reliable source. Um, and our library, um, the Jerry Falwell Library, has some links to APA formatting that are also good. There's some computer add-ons, um, format generators, that you can add to your Microsoft Word um, program and if you choose to use a formatting software um, or if you choose to use the formatting software that comes let's say when you go into the um, article databases where you can find an article and you, you can click um, the, the recommended formatting for MLA or APA or any of the other social sciences be sure that you know what they know because there are errors um, in formatting programs and in the library resources. Sometimes they, they don't recognize it, it's generated automatically. So they may not pull the right information and they may plug and play things in the wrong location. And it's great to use it as a tool, but you need to know as much as your tool. Your tool should make things easier for you, not do the thinking for you. So if you use a generator that pulls all of your references and puts them in a reference, list and you click submit and you're not auditing that um, reference list, it is likely that there are going to be errors in that. Um, so remember, you have to know what your tools know, that you should be using them to maybe make things easier or gather information, but you need to always double check behind the tools you're using to make sure that they're accurate. Um, if you're in the nursing track and this is this is where your master's degree is, I want to remind you that APA is not just about um, running heads and level headings and a title page and a reference list. APA formatting, which is why it's a book, um, is about professional syntax. It's about professional writing. So one of the outcomes of a graduate education is that you increase your competency as a graduate level writer. And one of the ways we do that is giving you a, a format, a syntax, a taxonomy, um, some structure to the expectation of what graduate level writing looks like. So yes, we want you to get the content. We want you to get um, the intellectual components of what a graduate educator or nurse leader looks like, um, but we also want you to have the underpinning and the socialization of writing like a graduate writer so that you can demonstrate that not just in, in a content forum, but also in a written forum or if you need to articulate that in a professional way. Um, this is not a waste of time and, and right now it probably feels pretty tedious because you're trying to get your feet under you and juggle all the millions of things you've got going on and you're trying to show up and you're trying to do a good job and APA is making your head hurt. Make the investment now, folks. It's not going away. Um, I do want to just you know remind you that your uh, this course has an additional content section. There's some hyperlinks in there that you can use for tools. The first one I believe is the Purdue Owl website. Um, that's probably um, the the, the go-to site for you guys for this course, and it's probably adequate. Be sure you're checking this. Um, each assignment varies between 20 and 30% of your total grade is related to formatting. So if you are hoping this goes away and you're not intentionally improving how you're writing and using APA, that's gonna be reflected in a lower grade and that's um, that's completely preventable. You know, that's low hanging fruit, folks. So make sure you're being intentional about using APA and, and addressing those writing opportunities now. Um, Going through my notes, I think that's all I have to say about that. Um, let's talk real briefly about next week. Next week, you have a, um, a, reflect, a reflective exercise. Someone on the Ask the Professor link asked, you know, can I use first person when I write in a, reflect, in a reflective um, paper? And folks, I'm okay with that. Um, not everybody is. It's not APA um, formatted appropriately. Um, APA requires the, the, the third person, basically, instead of saying I, you say the writer or the author. 
I, I feel like when we give you a reflective writing exercise, it, it's kind of um, uncomfortable to spend the whole time saying the writer, the writer, when it really is just about you and we know it's about you and it's not really a formal paper. So I am okay with you using I. Know that that's, that's in the gray zone of APA and that other professors may feel differently about that. So anticipate a formal paper expecting um, you to use the author, not I. Um, so for, for that purposes, I think you're okay with it. This reflective exercise has you thinking about something adverse that has happened in your work environment, whether it's a, an ethical dilemma, a conflict, a problem, something that created an issue for you. And we want you to explore what happened, give details about those um, events, and discuss how it impacted your practice. What we're really looking for is your ability to think about things um, that are unanticipated in your work environment and how you regulate it your response to it and what you learned from that. You know, that this assignment deals with um, kind of self-reflection of thinking about this happened, this is what I thought about it, and this is how it has meaning for me. Um, so spend some time with this. The paper is, is two to four pages. It's not a deep dive, folks. Um, don't make it more than it is. You do have a requirement to have one to two um, um, scholarly references and if you're googling it likely it is not scholarly you need to get into the literature you need to look for articles um, that support your ideas if you're if you're wobbling about how to use the Jerry Falwell library we do have librarians um, you can email them or call them and say hey I need a tutorial um, do not be afraid to get comfortable looking for articles and navigating peer-reviewed journals within our database it is not going to be um, supporting of your success to use um, Google to to find websites and web um, editorials and commentaries. Those aren't scholarly sources. You really do want to use peer-reviewed articles um, that have been published in the last five years that are relevant to your topic. So, so begin to think that way. When you see the word scholarly um, support or, or scholarly evidence, that's what we're talking about. Um, so begin to anticipate that. I think that's all I have. I have read, I think I've gotten all of your introductions, so welcome if, if you've missed my hello, how are you? Um, it, it's always very interesting um, in a course that that we that feels very heavy in nursing, we actually do, you have five non-nursing peers in your classroom, so be nice to them. Um, not everybody has to be a nurse, we love everybody. We, um, interesting in, in 19 students, we have four active duty military, and we have one spouse of a military person, so especially on um, today being Memorial Day, um, my thoughts and prayers and my gratitude are with you and your family. If you know somebody that has served or you've lost somebody through service to our country, um, this is an especially uh, meaningful day for you. We are a, a Navy household. My husband and my son both served in the Navy. Um, so we certainly get the, the meaning of um, that kind of commitment. So we really are grateful for, to those of you that have served. Lots of you have kids, um, lots and lots of fur babies. As you can see, it's about... It's 3.30 Eastern Standard Time um, in my bubble here in Roanoke, Virginia, and it's nap time, which you can see, I think, from your perspective over my right shoulder is, no, is that right? Maybe your left. The big one's Madeline, the little one's Gracie, and it's nap time. Um, and it's a holiday, so don't tell my husband, but he's also napping. I am the only one in this house working today. Um, I... There were two of you, sometimes when I look and see where you're from, I always try to figure out like who's the furthest. So um, your classmates, one of you is in, let's see, who's in Japan? All right, Cherie, I think is the one that's in Italy. Hang on, I'll find you. Somebody in Washington said, okay, it's Allison. Allison is in Japan. So. I am no good at Google uh, um, it, um, geography, so I had to Google how far Japan and Sicily are from Liberty University. So, in case you ever want to play trivia, Japan is 6,811 miles, and Italy it's a mere 4,859 miles. So clearly, um, Allison wins the the um, who is farther to from Liberty than anybody else. So um, just be grateful. You know, if you're in Washington State or California, it's not that far. Um, and I'm only an hour and a half, so I'm really just down the road. Folks, want to remind you: use the Ask the Professor link for the who, what, when, where, how kinds of logistic questions. Um, if you've posted a question in the Ask the Professor link, know that I get that. Um, sending it to, sending it to me by email as well only duplicates your efforts and junks up my email box. 
anything personal to you, your grade concerns that are very um, private, do not hesitate to email me or reach out and I'm happy to have a phone call um, with you at any point. Um, just know that you do have those ways to reach me and I, and I try to be pretty attentive to those things. I am traveling starting tomorrow until next Monday. Um, my husband and I are traveling cross country by train. Um, from Washington DC to California to San Francisco so I am not falling off the grid um, unless Wi-Fi is like really crazy on a train which it shouldn't be um, so know that I'm here um, but I, but I will probably I won't be hovering over the computer um, as as often as I normally do just know that I'm here I will um, look forward to seeing your reflective exercises catching up with you through the Ask the Professor link if there's some logistics questions or hear from you by email with anything personal. Know that this week I'm praying for you. I'm thinking for you. I hope you guys are having a, um, a blessed um, and hopefully somewhat restful Memorial Day. And if you're having to work, I hope you're getting time and a half. Y'all take care.